All right, guys, well, it was just about a month or so ago that we drove and reviewed the 2019 M850i Coupe, and now we're driving the M850i Convertible. Now, we touched over a lot of stuff, a lot of detail on that other review that we're gonna kinda gloss over in this review. So if there's something I missed here, please go check out that review. And if I still didn't answer your question, please leave it in the comments below. So one of the things I kept getting asked in the two weeks that I've driven these two cars was what in the world is this thing? A lot of people assumed it was the six series convertible or coupe. Some people just had no idea at all. When I told them it was the eight series, a lot of people that knew something about BMW were actually astonished that the eight series is back and it's a convertible. So this is the first time that BMW has ever made a convertible eight series. And they just brought the eight series back as a 2019 model. They started sales in 2018 for these 2019 models. So like I've said, you can get the eight series in either a coupe or convertible, both of which I've reviewed now. For the 2020 model year, you have the Grand Coupe, which is the four door version of this car, something that I'm actually really excited to check out and hope that I get a review as well. If you're interested to see that, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know so I can pressure BMW to get me one. So let's quickly run down the trim levels of what BMW is offering here with the 8 Series. You can get the base 840i. You can get that either in a rear-wheel drive package or the xDrive package, which is BMW's all-wheel drive system. Next step up is this BMW M850i, not to be confused with the M8. This is just the M package essentially on the 850i which is the only configuration you can get the 850i in. So the M850i only comes in xDrive, so you can only get this in an all-wheel drive configuration and not in a rear-wheel drive configuration. And then of course the ultimate step up is the M8 where you get more power and more performance focused, but we're not gonna touch too much on that. Let's talk about this car in front of us. Let's first start with the exterior and the exterior color here. This is called Dravit Gray Metallic. I think I got that right. It's not my favorite color in their lineup, but it's decent. Obviously, this is the convertible model and you do get two soft top options. One is the standard black soft top and the other is a moonlight black soft top for an extra $250. The convertible's biggest feature is its compact soft top design. When closed, it creates a notchback silhouette and it retracts within 15 seconds, even while driving at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. Of course, this is a BMW and you get that BMW iconic design with those kidney grills, very squinted headlights up here, LED headlights, LED taillights. You get nice big exhaust ports in the back. Overall, a really stylish and good looking vehicle. And one of the big complaints with convertibles is with the top down, it loses its proportions, it looks weird, but this thing with the top down, it still looks pretty good. You do get 20 inch BMW M performance wheels with M performance calipers and rotors. If there is one thing that I'd point out about this 8 Series is that it's not a small vehicle. Total overall length of the 8 Series is 191.2 inches. And just for a comparison, the four-door Toyota Camry is 192.1 inches, so it's less than an inch shorter than a Camry. And proportionally, it doesn't look bad, but you can definitely tell it's a pretty big car when you're driving it. So looking at the trunk is obviously going to be a big difference between this and the coupe. You do have a big section of the trunk that is being taken up by the convertible top. Now the good thing is that you can load this trunk up and not have to worry about raising and lifting the top because it all goes into this one cabin, but it does take quite a bit of trunk space to do so. So while I had all my camera gear packed into the M850 coupe just fine, this thing is a pretty tight fit. And of course you do get that push button open and close feature. So with a push of a button, it automatically closes. My only gripe here is that it is kind of slow. And the first time I was opening it, I pushed the button a couple of times. It didn't know what I was trying to do because when you push it, it takes a second to realize it and open up. And kind of the same thing, closing it. 
the hood here is BMW's 4.4 liter M Performance V8 engine. That pushes 523 horsepower and 553 foot-pounds of torque, matched up to an eight-speed sport automatic transmission that has sport and manual shift modes and launch control. The convertible will do zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds, while the coupe does 3.5 seconds. So if you're looking at the 840i, you're looking at a three liter turbocharged inline six engine that pushes 335 horsepower and 368 foot pounds of torque and is also matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission. The M8 on the other hand has the same 4.4 liter V8 under the hood, but the M8 has 617 horsepower and can do zero to 60 in three seconds flat. All right, so inside this car, obviously it's BMW, it's nice. We have these ivory white seats, which are super nice and very comfortable. They're heated, they're cooled. You get these extra little uh, heater vents for your neck, really cool. But the white carpet in the floorboard already has stains and stuff in it. Uh, it would be a hassle to maintain. Don't know if I could do it. You also have this black leather trimming with white contrast stitching and some nice wood grain texture for your other trimming. You do have the same three spoke leather M Sport steering wheel that we did in the coupe and this is heated as well. When you turn on your heated seats, you actually get a heated armrest as well. You get auto climate control with separate left and right controls. This is obviously pretty nice, but there's no one button to sync both sides. So if you're the driver and the passenger was set at like 80, but you want to be at 60, uh, you got to hit both of them to, to reset them instead of just hitting one button to set yours and then sync both of them. A little bit of a nitpick there. So just like the coupe we drove, we get the glass pack for the controls. So the uh, M drive dial, the shift knob, and the start button all have glass on them. Looks pretty cool, looks very luxurious. Uh, gets very hot out in the sun. <laughs> so if you want to deal with that. Moving along to the tech, you get a 10.25 inch touchscreen display. So this is touchscreen, but you also have the iDrive dial down here that you can control it with. I prefer the touchscreen, but the controls here aren't too bad. And it leverages the multi-input iDrive 7.0 system to be able to handle that touchscreen and the iDrive dial and voice recognition. Behind the steering wheel is a 12.3 inch LCD display. And this is called the live cockpit where you can adjust your dials to match what you're looking for. I like the view with the navigation in the center and that sport look with the red looks pretty good. You do have a Wi-Fi hotspot. You do have Apple CarPlay that can be done through a wireless connection and you have wireless charging in here. You also do have a USB port up here to connect your phone through USB. You also get a USB type C port in the center console as well as an accessory power port. Our sound system in here is a Bowers and Wilkins Sound Diamond surround sound system. It sounds super good and I especially like these mesh grills that go over the speakers and then the speakers inside have LED lights that almost make them look like a galaxy. Looks super nice at night along with the other ambient lighting in the cabin. You also do get a really nice heads up display for driving, keeping that information in front of you. Speaking of driving, let's get into the driving portion of this review.
So the hardtop design was specifically designed with multi layers so that it would be very quiet and keep the cabin free of wind noise while it's closed. It was also specifically designed to be lightweight to keep the center of gravity very low and reduce the extra weight that you are automatically gonna get by having a uh, convertible. You do get a wind deflector that comes standard to mitigate some wind noise in the cabin with the top down. You also do get rollover protection. So you've got two high strength aluminum roll bars that pop out from behind the rear seats. And of course, this front windshield surround is made to be super strong for rollovers. We're not going to be testing that out today, though. Now, being a BMW, this is a very direct driving car. You get very direct steering. All of the inputs feel just perfectly calibrated, and it's a delight to drive. Of course, this does have that big V8 under the hood. You can put it into sport mode and make a lot of noise, but I found myself just driving this thing in comfort mode and cruising most of the time. But when you are ready to go, you can hit that sport mode button and just go. And it's super quick. Granted, it's slower than the coupe, but it's super quick. And doing that with the top down is pretty insane. We'll have to try that in just a second. this really is the way this thing should be driven top down sport mode loud exhaust lots of power back country roads this is what will make you love this BMW course with the top down I'm always paranoid about what I've got in the cabin of the car first time I took the top down I had these papers just kind of sitting in the back seat and they immediately flew up and I had to grab them but I got them nice and tucked away got everything kind of tucked down it's just a glorious thing A lot of people that are really into performance vehicles are really down on convertibles. But if you've never driven a performance convertible and you're a car guy, I say you're missing out. I personally prefer the Speedster style, the Roadster, where you're never really meant to have the top up. I definitely am not a fan of four-seater convertibles, especially ones where the back seats don't even matter. But this is a glorious feeling for a car guy. It's a really stable feeling vehicle. You feel plants to the road. The steering inputs are very direct. The acceleration is very direct. You get X drive, so it's all wheel drive. I've never felt like I've really been scared in this vehicle, no matter how hard I push it which can be a bad thing if you're wanting to be scared from your car. But all the power just seems so usable. And again, it's just a glorious feeling with this roof down. Of course, it's almost just as nice to drive slowly as it is quickly with all that loud exhaust and crackling on the backdraft, which again is nice and fun and exciting but if you're looking for a performance car, is this really what you're choosing? All right, well, I promise you guys a zero to 60 with the top down. We're coming up on a straight part of the road. So let's uh, get that out of the way right now. Dead stop, sport mode, 
I'm not going to worry about manually shifting or anything. Let's go. 60. <laughs> Just too much fun. Having too much fun on these roads. So let's talk a little bit about the price and competition and we'll wrap this thing up. For the base 840i convertible, you're looking at $97,400. In comparison, the coupe's base price is $87,900. The base price for the M850i is $121,000. Again, for the coupe version, it's $111,000. This one we're sitting in with a few options is $131,390. This is a lot of car and that's a lot of money. And when you compare it to other things, that's when it can get a little bit tricky. It really depends on what you're trying to get out of this vehicle. If you're wanting a high performance vehicle, you probably want to go with the Coupe or the M8. You could also look at other BMWs like the 6 Coupe or the 4 Coupe, which are both great performance vehicles, but not quite as straight up powerful as this thing is. Of course, you could look at stuff like the F-Type from Jaguar, but I'm pretty sure they just discontinued the convertible here in the US. You can go check out my video on 35 cars that were discontinued here in the US if you want more information about that. You also have vehicles like the Lexus LC500, the Maserati Gran Turismo, of course, the Porsche 911. You also have things like the Mercedes AMG GT, the S63, or I've personally driven the E63. Now, I've only driven the wagon and the sedan, not the coupe or the convertible, so it's hard to compare those two to this. But that E63 is more powerful, it feels faster, it feels just as luxurious, if not more so. It is around the same kind of money, but as much as I love BMW, I might go for that E63 over this. Again, I don't really like the E63 looks for their coupe or convertible, but that sedan really rocked and the wagon is very unique. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the M850i, especially this convertible version of it. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm gonna jump back in and do some more driving on this beautiful Sunday, Texas day.